All right, Canes fans, very excited about this guest that we have joining the show right now. Hayden Bradley, tight end out of Buford, Georgia, just outside of the Atlanta area there. A guy here that recently visited the University of Miami, was down in Coral Gables last weekend, and his recruitment's blowing up here before our very eyes. So appreciate him joining the show tonight. Hayden, man, how you doing? Doing great. How are y'all? Doing great, man. Doing great. Yeah, Excited man. to have you on tonight. And, you know, the Canes fans and college football fans out there in general, right? Getting to know you a little bit as your recruitment the last few weeks has really taken off here. Talk to us about what this has been like for you the last month or so. Has it been a whirlwind? Have you kind of had to like pinch yourself and say, is this, is this happening? I mean, walk me through these last few months as your your junior season ended you know it's it's been awesome i mean very very humble moment i mean I'm, i just gotta stay humble i mean it's very uh, very cool moment and you know it all happened in literally a month a month or so so i mean it's definitely been very very cool moment but you know i just gotta keep my head down keep working it gives me something to look forward for next year for sure but you know coaches always told me you know I, i'm gonna be a division one football player i'm gonna blow up blah 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 you know, I just always kept my head down. You know, I just got to go on to the next day, just make it to the next day and just keep working, keep working. And, you know, it, it came true. And, you know, they were right. And I didn't want to believe them at that time because, you know, I was focused on one thing. And, you know, that was the work I had to do to get there. And, you know, now now that's happened and it's awesome. It's a surreal moment for sure. And I was telling Brad before we got on here, there's a picture of you from last weekend with Coach Cristobal down there. Canes fans understand Coach Chris Hall is a former offensive lineman, big dude. You're there next to him. I'm going to try to bring this picture up here so people can see it. But the physical attributes are there, obviously. You look like a tight end, uh, that's for sure. I mean, talk to us about your athletic background, right? Because this tight end position is changing now. It, it's not these big lumbering dudes who are, who are blocking every play, but – you look at your build, obviously you have the athletic, you know, frame to continue to put some weight on, but talk to us about kind of growing up the sports that you played and how you got to this position right now. As we pull this picture up here, you're next to coach Cristobal there. And, and like I said, I mean, you're towering over him, so to speak. Coach Bell, he's, 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 he's very tall as well. So yeah. Uh, Definitely some big guys over in Miami, but um, you know my background was, you know I uh, I played baseball my whole life. Uh, I was a left-handed pitcher, played outfield, and I I grew up playing football. I mean baseball was really my first love, and then you know as I started to mature and realize I had, I mean I, I had a future in football. I started to really dial in, lock in on that. So I dropped baseball uh, last year, so stopped playing that. So that was a pretty tough decision to make, but you know it, it turned out to be the the right decision. But uh, I played uh, receiver. Growing up, uh, I played a little bit of tight end when I was younger. It wasn't really big. You know, I was I was kind of bigger when I was younger. So, you know, when we needed to block, I would, I'd get my hand in the dirt and I'd go block. But, no, I played receiver, uh, safety. I even played corner at one point in middle school. So I was like, kind of all around. Just They just wanted to use my athletic ability as, as much as they could. And, you know, coaches saw that when I was really young. I had a, I had a guy, uh, Carl Elliott and uh, Ryan Golden, and they'd always be in my parents' ear, just telling them, "Man, this kid's this kid's got something special. He's very, very athletic. He's got an athletic, you know, talent. He's he's gonna hit. He's gonna hit hit it pr pretty soon." And uh, they they were they were right. And uh, so it's ever since then, just everybody's always talked about my athletic ability. You know, being able to jump, you know, being able to be my height, and be able to still move really quickly. So definitely, definitely key to be keying to athletic ability. Hayden, you talk a little bit about your playmaking ability, right? You know, especially wanting those big opportunities and those big moments. Where does that come from within yourself? You know, did that start at a young age, you know, out there at the the baseball field? Or is that just something that something that you tap into once you put on that football home? And is that something different than what you felt on, on the baseball field? Talk a little bit about that and that playmaking opportunity and the ability of just wanting those big opportunities in your hands. So when I was on the baseball field, I played outfield and, you know, I was always diving for like the easiest balls, just trying to make them look harder. So I was always trying to put it out there make it look like I was doing something that was unreal. So I was always wanting that moment. And, you know, I just wanted to be in that moment because, you know, 
some people don't want to be in that moment, but I, I live for that moment. I think it's awesome. Just, you know, you got to play on, you got the, I mean, the game on the line. I want to be that guy. So that's kind of my mentality, you know, and then when I strap up that football helmet, that's, that's been, that's my mentality, you know, you know, the games, if the game's on the line, you want, I want the ball. So I, and I want to make that happen. So that's definitely when I, when I strap up that football helmet, it's, it's go time for sure. Now you talk a little bit about your mentality, right? You know, just in the month of January, you accumulated a little over 20 offers just in one month. Talk about from a mental standpoint, you know, I know we talked a little bit earlier about just re remaining humble within this process, right? What what are some other things or some key people in your life that you really um, lean on throughout this process? You know, because I know this is something very new to you, very different from the baseball realm, you know, here going with football. You got to make sure you have the right people in place and you have the right key and priorities that you're looking for in a university the next three or four years. So talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. You know, my family has been a big key. You know, they've, they've, they've kept me in check, you know, to stay, 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 stay focused, stay in your lane. You know, don't get outside. You, you, you got to be humble. And uh, my family's helped out with that. Coach Davis, our recruiting coordinator at Buford, he's, he's been a huge part of my life these past couple of years. Uh, definitely the coaching staff at Buford also. You know, I have a I have a small group of friends and, you know, they, they push me, which I love. And having a group of friends that will you push you and make you work harder is awesome. So those are those have been. And then like my, my mentors, like I said, Carl Elliott, Ryan Golden, they pushed me since I was six years old. So they, they've been making sure I'm working and just keep working and never stop working. So that's always been huge. And just they, they've made my mentality what it is today for sure. And I know over Hayden. at Buford, I know over at Buford University, they they like to push you guys in the weight room, right? But well, what are you doing within yourself to push yourself in, in, in the film room to kind of help you with that football IQ? Uh, you know, just asking questions. That's huge. You know, some people are scared to ask questions. I mean, I believe, I mean, there's no such thing as a dumb question, in my opinion. You gotta get out there, you gotta ask your questions. If you don't know something, you think it's stupid, ask it. That's that's real big on my part. I I mean, I ask questions. People might say I ask too many questions, but you know, I like to learn anytime I can learn more about the game. I'm all for it. So that, that's definitely huge. And then the weight room, like you said, you know, Buford's different. You know, a lot of people are they're not even in the weight room yet. And we've been hitting it for five weeks straight. I mean, when I say hitting it, we've been we've been getting it. So uh, we're definitely working and it's it's going to be a different outcome this year for sure. Love it. Kind, kind of piggybacking off of Buford and obviously a tremendous program out there. As we're watching your highlights, Hayden, you know, you're you're playing all over the place. They're, they're splitting you out wide. You're playing in line. You're playing as an H-back at times, right? So that's, I think, unique, and, and it seems like they're trying to prepare you for the next level the way that you're going to be used. So could you just talk about as a tight end, and, and here we go. I mean, the, your clips, we got some blocking clips. It's not just you, you know getting downfield and stretching the defense, right? Which I think at your age, tight ends nowadays, it's a glorified receiver position. So again, talk about how you believe Buford and how you're being used in this offense is preparing you for the next level and how you're going to be asked to do multiple things in an offense. You know, the tight end game, it's changing. I mean, it's, 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 diff it's definitely different than it was, you know, 10 years ago. You know, Brock Bowers, Travis Kelsey, Isaiah Likely, they're all, they're all changing the game and it's awesome. So, I mean, Buford's offense, Coach Condon, he's our offense coordinator, Coach Dasher, tight end coach. You know, they, they watch – I mean, we got NFL film, you know, SEC, ACC, big power – any power five school. I mean, we're, we're watching their film, trying to mimic what they do. And, you know, the tight end game, they're, you're, not, you're not just in line blocking the whole time. That's just not how it is this, this time of day. So, uh, we're, we're flexing out, you know, lining up in the slot. I mean, you got, you got tight ends running screens now. I mean, you've never heard of that 10 years ago. You would have never thought that. So we got tight screens now. I mean, you're you're going out for a, I mean, a thirty yard post. I mean, you're you're running the deep balls now, and so it's definitely changing. And you know, Buford's definitely on point with that. So they got, I mean, they'll they'll have you ready for when you get to college for sure. And there's no doubt about it. You're playing special teams there too. So I mean, this is all obviously going to prepare you for the the early times of the next level because. You got to you got to find your way on the field somehow. And it definitely definitely looks like Buford is, is pre preparing you well to do just that. Absolutely. You know, Buford, yeah, I mean, Buford ahead, you never, never play just one position. I mean, at Buford, you're, you're for the team. It's not about it's not about you. It's it's we over me. That's our that's our motto. 
So we over me. So you you got to get out there. I mean, as a tight end, you might want the ball. You want the ball ball at maybe five out of ten times, but you know you might get it zero out of ten times. But you know you could have been the reason that they score with that key block or that that you set and dropping back on a KOR and you making a I mean a huge block and we get twenty five extra yards and we're up on the fifty. You know it's it's definitely we over me or uh, yeah we over me at Buford and that's our motto and we live by it for sure. There's nothing wrong with the we over me uh, motto, man. But right now we're talking to you and you individually have been getting a ton of offers like we talked about. Some some big time programs, right? I know Penn State was, was a big time offer um, that you recently went on uh, a visit to them. And then coming off that Miami visit um, to Miami, before we even dive into the visit in general, um, talk a little bit about that trip that coach Mario had uh, coming to your high school and being, being able to not only sit down with you, but also with your dad and kind of just laying out the foundation of not only the university of Miami, but kind of who Mario Cristobal represents as a, as a human being. I mean, it's awesome. You know, that shows a lot to me, you know, he hit him taking time out of his, his recruiting process and come check out, you know, Buford and you know, get to talk one-on-one -on -one with my dad. That was huge for me. I mean, relationships, definitely a big part of my uh, recruiting process. You know that, so that that stuck with me a lot. So you know him coming down and making the trip, I had to show him love, and I had to I had to get down there and make that trip for sure. Now talking a little bit about the trip, Hayden. Um, what were some of the things that leading up to the trip that you were most interested in, and then you know some of the takeaways coming back from the trip that really just were the highlight moments of the trip, whether it was for you or your family. I was really, really looking forward to how they utilize their tight ends because, you know, Miami's known as tight end university. They produce many of tight ends. You know, you got uh, Jeremy Shock, uh, Jeremy Shock. You got uh, uh, there's Jimmy Clint, Graham, Jimmy Graham, Greg uh, Olson. David and Joku Olson, William, William, maybe two years ago. He was an absolute beast. So, you know, they're known for tight end university. So, uh, I was definitely looking uh, forward to you know getting in there, watching film, see how they utilize their tight ends. And when I got in there, it was it was it was just how I thought it was going to be. You know, they they actually run a total like almost perfect to perfect uh, offense that Buford runs. So as soon as I sat down, he turned on the film. You know, I was able to you know identify the mic, you know, make the call of what the tight ends talking to the tackle. And I mean, they they loved that, and they said like they they never seen that before, and that's. That's one thing about Buford, you know, they have you prepared for that and they have you, I mean, ready to go into those films and you know what's going on and not not kind of have like an IQ on it. So that has been a really big part. Outside of the football aspect and the coaches and all that, what were your impressions of Coral Gables and the Miami campus? And, you know, I, I know you've started to get get to see some of these other campuses as well. So based off and you still have a pretty busy schedule ahead of you. But your impressions of Coral Gables? It was beautiful. You know, the weather was awesome. I was able to wear shorts and T-shirt at night. You know, right now it's about 28 degrees here at night. So, I mean, it felt awesome. And, you know, uh, they had the campus is absolutely beautiful. You know, they're doing a lot of construction on the campus right now. They're getting uh, brand new apartments for the uh, team. They'll have a seven-story uh, football facility. I think they said up to $1 billion. That's going to that's gonna be huge. So that's something I'm definitely looking forward for to. They said maybe my sophomore year that would be done. So that's definitely something I'll, I'll be looking forward to seeing and uh, getting to know more about. But Coral Gables is beautiful. The city of Miami, it's absolutely amazing. You know, the restaurants there, the food portions, that was big on me. Y'all's food. <laughs> you know, in Georgia, you think that, I mean, we got pretty pretty good amount of food, but you go there and you order, you know, chicken fingers, you might get 10. You, get, you order chicken fingers here, you're maybe getting three. So it was it was awesome. I love. I Listen, mean, I love you're you're paying you're paying the premium down here, but uh, you know, listen, you guys get nil money now, so so you don't have to worry about that very much. <laughs> they take care of you too. You know, they they they'll they'll be feeding you meals all the time, so they'll yeah. they'll make for sure. Definitely, Pl plenty of chicken fingers for you, Hayden. Plenty of chicken fingers, man. I gotta ask you, you you're ordering chicken fingers. What's your go-to sauce? Ooh. I'm, I'm I'm more of like a chicken tender for like a lunch kind of guy, you know. Like if it's something fast, but you know, like yeah, probably honey mustard. Okay. Here, here yeah, we I'm, have little, I'm a little picky on the honey mustard. Really, really, really. Yeah, it's got it's got to be a certain type of honey mustard, but I'm I'm, I'm picky in general. So I got I got you. You know, I'm I'm a big chicken kind of guy. Grilled chicken, fried chicken. Yeah. You get a fried chicken sandwich, I'll destroy that. Uh, but <laughs> I, steak, 
I'm, I'm not I'm not picky at all. I mean, right now I got to eat whatever's in front of me. So I'm just trying to scarf it down. So just trying to force eat right now. Hey, you, you go to Buford High School, man. I know that locker room can get pretty intense, and there's a lot of different characters and guys in that locker room. Well, what's your kind of go-to, you know, when you put on the headphones before and after, you know, practice and, and game time? Who who do you listen to right now? Uh, Destroy Lonely is pretty big at Buford. Uh, he's a rapper. Okay. Um, you know, if I'm trying to get, like, a, just a chill vibe, I'll put on some uh, Brent Fiez. You know, that might be a couple hours before the game. Uh, maybe, like, a Bryson Tiller. Drake, old, big old Drake guy. You know, you got, you also, people before the game, uh, you know, King Vaughn, he has some, you know, Chief Keith, he'll Rest get you. Rest in peace, King Vaughn. Yep. Yep. But yeah, those are definitely, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll connect to the, me and my, me and my boys, we'll, we'll connect to the Ox, either one of us, and it, it gets, it gets pretty rowdy in the locker room before a game. So it's, it's always cool. I'll, I'll cherish those moments forever for sure. You a big uh, Braves fan? We see the uh, we see the the banner behind you a little bit there. Uh, yeah. So so that that's your squad, huh? You you, you so, so you're not playing baseball, but you still follow Major League Baseball closely. I mean, I mean, huge Braves Braves fan. It's about 45 minutes to get there. I actually got to go to the World Series when they were in it. That was that was awesome moment. I'll never forget that they they won that game. So that was huge. Uh, but I've always been a Braves fan, man. Just growing up watching them, so. Absolutely. I'll always be a Braves fan. Now, Hayden, growing up, obviously, you being a Braves fan and you playing at Buford High School in Georgia, who was your college team growing up? I know a lot of te- a lot of times, especially with Hurricane fans, when we hear Buford High School, a lot of people automatically go to, you know, Georgia Bulldogs. Who was your school growing up or do you still have a favorite school going through this process? So when I was young, I was big on colors when I was real young. Colors, so, you know, like the. The Oregon's, the UNC's, the Miami's. Okay. Uh, let's see. There's there's a bunch of schools. You know, anybody that had a like TCU, I love the purple and black. That was also all yeah. that was but, you know, growing up with that silver chrome. Oh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And then like they had the uh the black and pink jerseys at uh, Oregon. I thought the, those were off my Instagram account. I'd I'd screenshot it and I'd post it on there. But uh uh definitely schools with colors, but growing up I, I liked watching Georgia. For sure, my uncle uh, he he had the opportunity to go out there and play, but he busted up his knee. But um, back when Vince Dooley was the head coach, but you know I grew up. My parents grew up a Georgia fan, so I was I was kind of forced into it. So I grew up watching them over at Sanford Stadium. Love it. Now you you mentioned you mentioned the orange and green colors. Do do we have do we have an old picture you know from back in the day of you maybe in some hurricane gear that maybe we could post later on of you know in three or four years down the line of you a future hurricane i have, you know, I have miami uh marlins pictures okay right? hey that's close i have a couple of them i was a big marlins fan uh man I, you're I, I i you how can you be a marlins fan and a braves fan man no, come on not now absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> uh, back when i was young i was i was a bandwagon it's I colors, was, though. I mean, but like colors, you said, it's colors, colors. and colors. and especially when the Miami Marlins made the switch. Oh yes, yeah, you know, awkward. I know. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then when I was playing in MLB the show, I'd always go to Marlins Stadium and play with whatever team. That was always the go-to stadium. Okay. Well, with the with the that was when they had the uh, the statue in the in center field there, the colorful statue that yep. is now gone. But. Yep. Well, hey, man, Hayden, man, we appreciate your time for joining us, man. Um, the last question I really have for you is we kind of know what you bring to the table on the football field, right? We, we were able to bring up some clips of your huddle film. But what are some things that Kane fans or just fans across the nation don't know about Hayden Bradley that you bring on the football field from a mental standpoint or what someone may be getting out of a Hayden Bradley for the next three, four, five years at the next university? You know, definitely a true leader. You know, I like to be loud. I like to talk. I like to help people get through stuff. You know, also just like being being respectful to others. You know, that's real big. You know, asking how somebody's day was, that can always change. Cause you never know what somebody could be going through. So always asking how their day was or, you know, give them a pat on the back when they do something good. That can always help, you know, push others to, the, you know, get to that next level pretty much. So definitely okay. just being a true leader and, you know, just helping people out for sure. My, my last thing here before we let you go, Hayden, is look – if it ends up being Miami, you may have to dust off the the baseball cleats because the Canes have a pretty serious 
baseball program down here. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, they, they, they can always use some, use some, some premier arm talent and, uh, you know, an extra bat as well. You know, the, the cleats are hung up right now, but they can, they can definitely come off for sure. Hayden Bradley, awesome talking to you tonight on the Canes Inside Podcast. Appreciate you joining the show and, you know, wherever you end up, best of luck and, uh, you know, college football fans getting to know you a bit tonight here. Appreciate your time and talk to you later. I appreciate y'all for having me on.